My name is Randy Kramer. I'm an environmental economist. In the early days, I was doing studies of how land use was affecting environmental quality. But I quickly learned that it was also affecting human health in the communities surrounding the areas where we were studying. Worldwide, over 200 million cases of malaria occur every year, and this results in about a half a million deaths. The environment can have a significant impact on malaria transmission in several ways. First, when there's land use change, that can alter the habitat for mosquitoes, which transmit malaria. Secondly, if there are major dam construction projects that alter the flow of water, that can increase malaria transmission in surrounding communities. And thirdly, climate change can play a role. So when temperatures rise, malaria can move to higher elevations or can move back into areas where it was previously eradicated. The scale up of malaria interventions worldwide has had a major impact on reducing deaths from malaria. But there's concern that some of these interventions are losing their effectiveness. We've worked with colleagues in Tanzania to build an interdisciplinary research team to look at how better to deliver malaria control in rural villages. And this work has involved household surveys, collection of blood samples, collection of mosquitoes, also geospatial mapping. And this has allowed us to look at the effectiveness of different malaria control strategies in multiple study sites. One of the things that we've put a lot of emphasis on is the use of bacteria-based larvicide called BTI that we have found kills mosquito larva in an environmentally safe way and in a cost-effective way. In addition, we've worked with colleagues to develop what we call the Malaria Decision Analysis Support Tool, or MDAS. The tool produces a number of simulations that allow decision makers to look at the trade-offs in terms of health, environment, and economic cost for applying different approaches to malaria control. One advantage of using the MDAS decision tool was that we were able to bring together people from multi-sectors who were working on malaria but not necessarily working together. And we find that the tool creates dialogue that otherwise would not occur. There are a couple of things that I've really enjoyed about this work. Uh, one is learning from my African colleagues because they know far more about controlling malaria than we do, but we've been able to bring in some additional resources and research approaches. I'm very excited about a new project in Madagascar working with my Duke colleague, Charlie Nunn, to look at how deforestation and biodiversity loss is affecting the transmission of diseases from small mammals to humans. And we're particularly fortunate that we're able to work with the conservation team of the Duke Lemur Center, which has an office in the region. In order to carry out the work, we're taking a group of students to Madagascar who are helping us collect socioeconomic data, ecological data, and health data, which will form the basis of a larger study. And we're particularly interested in how farmer decision-making around a national park is influencing this disease transmission. The goal is to develop programs that will improve the sustainability of farming practices as well as to reduce disease risk. We've been able to move forward a research agenda in ways that none of us would have been able to do individually. It's also been a wonderful opportunity to train students, both U.S. students and African students who are working together side by side in the field.